Hey everyone, um, I'm going to be doing a quick rundown of how you can make a ticket system for your bot using Discord Bot Studio. Um, so if you're not familiar with this, basically a ticket system lets users in your server um, use a command and once they use that command it'll make a specific ticket channel that only them and sort of admins or mods can see. Um, and then you can use that channel to resolve an issue with that user or something to that effect and then you also want to have a way to effectively close um, that temporary ticket channel once uh, the issue is resolved so I've already made up all the nodes to save some time um, there's not really many that you need and this can be expanded upon I'll talk about that a little bit um, but the, for the basics um, I'll run you through this really quickly so first of all, I just have a command node um, called ticket. So you would do like exclamation ticket to call this. And then we have a couple of channel nodes. So the first thing we need to do is actually make this temporary ticket channel. So if I click in here, um, you can see that I'm calling the channel ticket underscore and then the ID of the command author. So essentially the channel is gonna be called ticket underscore ID of whoever called this command and that way you can keep track of who the channel is actually for um, you could do like username instead of ID if you wanted or, or really anything um, but ID is guaranteed to be unique um, so you might want to use that and then I made a category on my test server called tickets and that's what I would advise doing creating a dedicated category because um, if there are a lot of temporary ticket channels, you don't want that um, cluttering everything up, basically. And then another essential thing we need to do here is save this new channel as a variable. And because we're going to be referencing it in later nodes. So I called it new ticket channel. Um, you can call it whatever you want. Just make note of what you called it. And then so the next thing we need to do is make the channel private. And so, as I said earlier, this temporary ticket channel is only for one user. So you don't want anyone but that one user to be able to see that this channel exists. So what you can do here is update the channel permissions for that channel. So you can see that variable that we save the new channel as. Um, take the ID, so specify that as the channel ID. And then the ID here is who um, this permission update is going to be applied to. So if we want to apply it to everybody, we can just use the guild.id and that will apply this to everybody in the guild. Um, and then the exception to that obviously is that administrators and like server owner um, will still be able to see this regardless because those permissions won't really apply for them. So if there's more permissions that you need um, to specify, feel free to do that. But essentially, the ones you for sure want to deny are view channel and send messages. So you can just multi-select that using control or command if you're on Mac and then specify in the dropdown that you want to deny those permissions. So this is going to make it sure that absolutely nobody at all in the server can see this new channel. And then along that same line, we want to make sure that the user who created this ticket can actually see the channel. So we're using the same channel variable, uh, the ID from that new channel we created. And then for the ID that we wanna update permissions for, this is the command author. And that's uh, fairly intuitive as the person who used the command is the person who this ticket channel is actually for. And then instead of denying these permissions, we're just gonna be allowing the view channel and send messages permissions. And that will make it so it's a private channel just for this person and administrators. And so if you wanted to allow other people, say you have mods or like support staff or something and you want them to be able to also see this channel, um, you could make another update permissions node. And then for the ID, you can specify a role ID here. So if you have like a support role, you would just put this ID here and then allow them these same permissions and they would also be able to access that channel. Finally, I just have a node that's going to send a message to the new channel. Um, and, you know, you can put whatever you want here, instructions for how to use it. But essentially, this is also going to be adding a button that says close ticket. 
and this is um, what the user is going to click when their issue is resolved and they want to delete this channel. Um, so buttons are new in Discord Boss Studio 2.0. So if you haven't seen how this works yet, um, basically you can edit the button, give it a label, give it a style. But the important thing you want to take note of is this custom ID because we're going to be using that on the event side of things to actually delete this channel when the button is clicked. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the command side of things. You can also, um, for example, if you want to only make it so a user can have one ticket open at a time, um, you could have some sort of user data field which tracks whether they have an open ticket. And then basically you would just check that following the command node and then set it at the end um, and then unset it when they delete the channel. Um, but that's totally optional. So now the other thing we need to do for this system is hook up something to that button event. So we had that button um, that when clicked is gonna allow the user to delete the ticket channel. So we're using the button interaction event, which is fired when a button is clicked. And then following that, um, this is a switch case node. This is also new in 2.0. Um, this is kind of a weird instance because I'm only using one possible output. Uh, but so for button interactions, basically you're going to want to put a switch case in front of it regardless. And then for each different button, you will add values. And then that allows you to connect responses um, based on the custom ID matching that value. So like the button we have for closing the channel, the custom ID I entered was close ticket. So when this value, uh, which is the custom ID from the interaction, is equal to this value, then the nodes connected to that output are gonna execute. And so if you have more buttons, you can add more values here, and then you'll just add, it will add more outputs um, to the node, and you can connect stuff to them. But since we only have one for the time being, there's only one output, and then all we're gonna be doing is deleting the channel. So this is a delete channel node, and then the nice thing about the button interaction, um, object is that you have access to this channel ID field. So that's the ID of the channel that the button was clicked in. And since the button is sitting in that temporary ticket channel, then it's going to be deleting that channel. So I can go ahead and run the bot now and I'll show you how this all works. So over in Discord, uh, the command we made is ticket. And you can see now a channel here has been created in the ticket category. The name of this channel is ticket underscore and then my Discord user ID. And that's because we specified that that's how we want to name the channel. And then you can see it's also been flagged as a private channel. And that's because we have um, only specified that myself and whoever is an admin or owner should be able to see this channel. Um, just to show you that, if you edit the channel, um, you can see roles and then members that can access it. And so I'm the only person that can access it, which is correct. And then, like I said earlier, you can add other roles using those update permissions nodes um, if you want other support roles or whoever to be able to see this channel as well. And then we get the message that we added as well. Um, telling us what this channel sort of is used for and then also it has the button to give us the option to close a ticket which will delete the channel so I'll do that now close ticket bots thinking for a second and then it gets deleted so that's exactly what we wanted the ticket is no longer there um, because the issue is resolved in our little mock case um, so yeah everything's working as it should be um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this. As I said, you can extend this uh, quite a few ways to make it more complicated, but this is basically like the starting point for a, a simple ticket system.